Welcome to Defeating the Lies of Negative Self-Talk. My name is Terri Ann Porter. Who am I and what do I know about the lies of negative self-talk? I am a professional people pleaser, now in recovery. I felt I had to make others happy doing as they wanted, even if it meant denying my desires, my self-worth. I found myself saying things like, well, she knows best, or maybe they'll like me, and even, I know the path is wrong, but if I go along, there won't be an argument and things will go smoothly. And then when things don't go smoothly or someone else has a problem, I somehow made it my fault. I have learned and continue to learn to find the lies in my self-talk, to face them down, and to move forward. I am a women's life coach, training through the Professional Christian Coach Institute, and I am a member of the Christian Coaches National, Work in National Network. I empower women to overcome self-doubt so that they may step into the unseen possibilities within themselves. In doing so, I have learned much about myself. I have found ways to defeat my own negative self-demons, self-talk demons, and I hope I can encourage you to do the same. Are you familiar with the story in Luke about a little man named Zacchaeus? Zacchaeus was a tax collector, not well liked by many in town. He also had a physical feature that hindered him as well. He was very short. One day, Zacchaeus heard a man named Jesus was coming through town. Try as he might, he wasn't tall enough to see over the crowds and he couldn't get past the crowds to get close enough to see this man, Jesus, that he had heard so much about. Zacchaeus stepped away from the crowd and ran ahead. He climbed a tree so that he, when Jesus walked past, he could see him. That's all he wanted to do, just see Jesus walking past. He knew he would never have an opportunity to talk to him. From his high perch up in the tree, he peered down above the crowd and he spotted Jesus. Then Jesus looked up and called out to him by name. Jesus told Zacchaeus he wanted to go to his house and have dinner. Negative self-talk told Zacchaeus, one, he was not good enough to get near Jesus. Perspective. Two, he didn't have the physical ability to get close. And three, he would never have a conversation with him. Yet because he changed his perspective, his view of the whole scene, by climbing up into the tree, he not only opened up the possibility of catching a glimpse of Jesus, he also found a pathway that allowed him to walk with Jesus and proceed home together for a shared meal. The goal tonight is to offer suggestions on recognizing the self-defeating talk perspective, considering that talk as a lie, possibilities, speaking truth to the lies, pathways open, and changing the self-talk, proceed. In this short time, we will not be able to go into deep detail, but you won't walk away with nothing. We are meeting with the goal of opening the path to new possibilities. We are all walking this journey, yet each will see different things along the way. Are you ready? Let's get started. Have you been on a vacation with someone or perhaps seen a movie or had dinner with them? But later on, when you hear that person retelling the story of an event that you were both at, you wonder if you were there together because their description of the story is nothing like your description. A definition of perspective is a particular attitude toward a way of regarding something, a point of view. Perspective is personal. Two people, can look at the same picture and see two entirely different things. What they see is reflective of the mood they're in. 
a memory, or even other people's comments on the subject. A couple of friends and I were looking at this picture on a wall. I saw a man praying over his son. I also saw the little teddy bear in the corner. One of my friends saw a man's hand on the back of his son. This caught her attention because it's exactly what her husband did with their son every night. My other friend saw the angel in the window. She loves angels. I never saw the angel until she pointed it out and the picture had been hanging in my home for some time. What do you see in this picture? Do you see a rabbit? Do you see a duck? Perspective determined what you saw. Did your perspective of the picture change when it was suggested that it was something else? Let's personalize it a little and take a look at a very common moment, looking in the mirror. What do you see when you look in the mirror? Here are some of the lies that I tend to tell myself when I look in the mirror. I am ugly. No one loves me. I always screw things up. Can you relate? You may not see the same lies when you look in the mirror. What are some of the lies that you tell yourself? What would it look like if we looked at these lies from a different perspective. A friend came to visit. We were sitting on my back deck drinking tea. We were just catching up on each other's lives and somewhere in the conversation, my friend commented on the beautiful yellow roses along my back fence. I looked back there and Yes, I did have a number of roses, but they were all red. I knew my friend wasn't colorblind. I just assumed that she misspoke, didn't say anything about it. We went on with our conversation. A little later, she brings up my beautiful yellow roses again. Well, now I'm totally confused. I asked her if she wanted to see them up close. So we walked across the backyard to the roses. I'm wondering, does she see? See one maybe in a distance I don't see. Nope, we are looking at my rose bush. We're both looking at it. We're both smelling and commenting at how wonderful these roses smell and how beautiful they are. Well, what color is it? I asked her. Well, is it yellow? She said, you know, kind of wondering where did that come from? Now I'm totally confused. I looked closely at her face and I said, would you please take your sunglasses off? When she did, she immediately shouted, oh my gosh, they're red. The amber tint on her sunglasses was so thick that it totally changed the color of what she was seeing. What does truth look like? To my friend, the truth was that the roses were yellow until they were not. You saw a duck in the previous picture, or perhaps a rabbit, until you did not. You get to decide what you will believe. How about then another view with possibilities? I wonder, what does God see when he looks at me? Considering the lies I tell myself, I was reminded man and woman were created in his image. God knew me before I was formed in my mother's womb. God looked over all that he made and it was excellent in every way. Can you can I look in the mirror with a new perspective, God's perspective? What possibilities abound? 
What if I quoted to myself God's truth instead of my truth? What if I called out my truths as what they really are? Lies. It is time to start talking to myself like I would talk to someone I love. I would not look at my daughter and say to her many of the things that I say to myself. What would it look like to talk to myself with the love I show my children? With the love God shows me. Well, realizing I must talk to myself in a loving manner is one thing. Doing it is another. In his video series, Crash the Chatterbox, Stephen Furtick named the negative self-talk Chatterbox. Gave it a name. That's what it was called. Now, in one episode, he did an interview with the Chatterbox, where he sat at the table speaking to this personification. By putting a face to the negative image, he could look at it and declare, no, I am not listening to you anymore. He gave himself permission to face the image and reject it. To personalize my negative image, I added a tiara, a simple plastic princess tiara I found at a party store. When I put on the tiara, a smile immediately comes to my face. First, because it is silly. Second, I'm reminded I am a princess. I did this with my granddaughter. She was eight or nine years old at the time. Grandma, she had declared, you can't call me a princess. I am not a princess. Really, I asked her. Is God your heavenly father? Yes. Is he the king? Yes. Are you his daughter? Yes, Grandma. What do you call the daughter of a king? With a big, with a big smile, she cried, I am a princess. So together, we wear our simple plastic crowns. With new lens, we changed our perspective, and we looked at a new possibility, and we opened up a new pathway by making it personal. So where do I go from here? One step at a time. Start to take notice of your self-talk. Now, when my negativity starts to show, I grab my tiara. Sometimes my husband hands me my tiara and tells me that I need to wear it for a while. The change of perspective brings new possibilities in my life. I step onto the pathway of truth, leaving behind those lies. It is not possible to walk past a mirror or see my reflection in the computer with the tiara on and not smile. That smile changes the volume of many of the lies screaming within. Was that statement, that truth, that thought, was it a lie or was it a truth? Face it down, one thought at a time. Celebrate each capture. Share that capture with a friend. Hey, I started to tell myself this, but no, I caught myself. Give yourself a high five. Celebrate it. When you fall back, don't beat yourself up. The fact that you realized you did it is another capture. Celebrate it. Turn around, face the lies, capture another. One thought at a time. Evaluate it. Truth or lie? It is a crossroad. You get to decide which path you will enter. In his book, A Man Thinketh, James Allen writes, all that you accomplish or fail to accomplish with your life is the direct result of your thoughts. You are today where your thoughts have brought you. You will be tomorrow where your thoughts take you. Zacchaeus's thoughts took him past his inability to even get into the crowd 
and on to dinner with Jesus. Where are your thoughts taking you? You get to decide what you will believe. You get to decide whether you will face down that lie with the truth or you will allow that lie to grow. Well, now what? What if you decide you want to start to face the lies and replace them with truth? You will have to take a step outside your comfort zone. Sometimes those lies become so easy to follow, we become comfortable in them. Are you ready to take the first steps? Are you ready for new possibilities? I will be hosting a six-week online course where we will dig deeper into the four P's, perspective, possibilities, pathways open, proceed. I will help you find the lens you want to change and the possibilities it will open in your life. You will find the new pathways you are willing to step onto as you proceed towards speaking God's truth into your life. It will be interactive. What works for me is part of my story. You will find the tiara needed in your story. Check my website, terryannporter.com, for details on the next course coming up. I hope to see you there.